All right. Good evening, everybody. Ooh, that's a little louder than I thought it was going to be. Good evening. Welcome. Uh, for those of you I don't know, um, I'm Mike Pincelli. I'm lucky enough to be the principal here at Brockport High School. Um, I want to thank you for your time tonight. Uh, we're following up to some time that your students spent with some of our department members today at the middle school talking about their potential uh, course elective selections for next year. We want to share with you some information about um, other aspects of the high school. No need to write this down or to take notes. We're going to post this uh, online tomorrow. We'll email it to you as well. Um, very informal tonight. I know we're up here on the stage and we have projectors and things, but if you have questions along the way, please stop me and ask. Um, we also have a panel of students and parents that we're going to do a little bit of Q&A just to give you a first-hand perspective on you know, transitions to the high school and what things are like here. So um, that's kind of our agenda. And then following that, um, we'll have department representatives in the lobby um, where you can ask follow-up questions and specifics around all of our academic departments. Okay. So the long list of things that we're going to talk about, um, and I know for especially the parents who don't have older siblings who've gone through high school program already. Um, it can be intimidating and there's a lot and everything counts and graduation and graduation requirements and diploma types and all those things. I, I want to start by assuring you that you are in and your students are in very good hands. Um, we have a fantastic team of counselors and administrators um, and teachers and support personnel here at the high school who um, just are fully invested in your student success and um, we're really looking forward to meeting um, our future class class of 2028 I can't believe I can't believe that but the class of 2028 so this is these are our counselors we have uh, four counselors currently here we actually are in the process process of adding a fifth you will hear from two of them tonight and they're going to share some information with you regarding graduation requirements and those types of things. We have a fantastic support team of social workers, school psychologists. We have a Delphi Rise counselor, that's a prevention counselor, so drug and alcohol counselor, full-time here at the high school. And then this is our administrative team. Um, myself and then three fantastic assistant principals. Two are down there right there. There's Ms. Dardano waving her hand, and there's Mr. Aichetta waving his hand. So thank you to all of you for being here tonight as well. So this is our mission statement. Um, you know, a lot of organizations have mission statements and it's a thing that's on the wall and it's a thing that you point to in presentations like this. I want to uh, assure you that this is a living, breathing mission statement for us here in Brockport and at Brockport High School. We live by these words when we make decisions around uh, programs and the things that we do with students in our buildings, we check them in reference to this mission statement to make sure that we're fully aligned. So currently at the high school we have 1,019 students, we have 98 teaching faculty, and we have four 10-week quarters is, is our uh, grade reporting system, but we do report grades every five weeks currently at the high school. Access in all the same ways you currently access um, student grades through Infinite Campus. We also have a full range of college preparatory, career and technical courses, and a number of specialty programs. Um, these are our core content areas. We're going to talk a little bit about some exceptional opportunities for your students as they work their way through their high school program. Um, some of it will apply to them in their freshman year, and some of it won't apply to their, you know, upperclassmen, juniors, seniors. Um, we're going to share bits of information, but um, again, don't become overwhelmed or try to you know, keep, keep all of that memorized. Um, there are going to be future opportunities for us to share information with you, and we'll walk you through it every step along the way through their high school career. We have 27 AP courses and honors courses at the high school, so lots of opportunity for advancement. We have career internship opportunities that are always growing, so students both within our district and working with community partners to have work-based learning experience as they work their way through their high school experience. We also have now 24 dual enrollment courses. So these are courses that students take here at Brockport High School and simultaneously earn college credit. Um, and some of those opportunities become available to students 
relatively early in their high school career. And we have students leave Brockport High School with quite a few college credits. I'm going to share a little bit more about that later in the presentation. And then over 45 clubs and 24 interscholastic programs as well. So what are dual enrollment and dual credit? So very, very briefly, a dual credit program is where students come to the high school, they take our class, and just by earning the credit for their high school course, they earn college credit. Our teachers collaborate with college professors, they share the grades with them, and then the student gets a grade transcripted on a MCC transcript or SUNY Brockport transcript, those kinds of things. We also have a, a relatively unique dual enrollment program. So dual enrollment is where students are actually simultaneously enrolled here as well as SUNY Brockport. This is what we call 313. So three years <clears throat> where students are uh, underclassmen here and then one year in which they're, they're dually enrolled both as a student here and a student on the college. Um, there is a cost associated with that program, but students spend time on the college campus as if they were enrolled in college and they have access to all the amenities on campus. That'll be something that further down the road you'll consider probably in, in the junior year sometime, you'll consider whether or not that program is, is a good fit for you and your student. But that is an on-campus experience. So you'll hear those terms used somewhat interchangeably um, as your student moves through their high school career, but dual and credit, dual enrollment, either way, students are earning college credit while they are still high school students here. So just some brief statistics here. Um, these are from 2022, but in, in that year, 92% of our seniors earn New York State diplomas. We're very proud of our graduation rates. 62% of our graduates went on to attend four-year colleges. Um, or two-year colleges, and one and a half percent enlisted in the military. Um, so, you know, when we say we engage and empower each student to achieve excellence as a learner and a citizen, that, that can look very different for every student in, in a number of ways. And we're continually looking for opportunities to expand the ways in which we're guiding students co toward career and college readiness, but both, as well as military. So again, more opportunities for students, um, you know, academic interventions, just like every school, you know, we have a, a series of those that are both academically driven, um, social, emotional, and mental health staff to support your students in those ways. Opportunities for elective, both half the year and full year courses. Pathways for CTE, which is career and technical education. And if you have interest in that, you can talk with our technology teacher or maybe business teacher out in the lobby following this and then opportunities for enrichment as well. This is a brief list of our athletic programs, fall, winter, and spring sports, so three sports seasons. And like we say, you get out of it what you put into it. So opportunities for every student to get engaged. And then a, a litany of intramural activities as well. And then these are all of the clubs that we have. We really, really encourage all of our students and our families to work with their students to find your passion, find your area. High school, for a lot of students, and high school is like this for me, high school is kind of where you find your tribe, right? You find the people who you identify with, who have the same passions as you, and that becomes really a cornerstone of your academic career. So um, we believe we have an incredible amount to offer and something for everybody. We have a student council. Um, Mrs. Arnold and Mr. Benson are the advisors. Actually, I think Mr. Benson is here as a representative for our social studies department tonight. So you can talk to him a little bit if you or your student have interest in student council. Um, but a very active group of students in our building, um, one whom I rely on very often to provide guidance in the student voice or perspective in the directions of our building. Um, and if you have interest in running for that, please contact your current advisor. So just a, a couple brief bits of advice for me again. Uh, explore and find your passion. Uh, we have so many incredible opportunities um, and, and I believe something for everybody. This is pretty critical. Um, learning for growth and not just your GPA. Um, things do become higher stakes when you get to high school and you're building a transcript and in some ways students can very easily feel like they're in competition with their peers. 
I highly encourage you to think about and focus on your individual and personal growth rather than any form of, of academic competition. Focusing on work and time management skills, that, those executive functioning skills that become more and more important um, as you get older are absolutely critical for success in high school. So having a quiet, well-lit place to do homework, um, making sure that assignments are written down, that you are collaborating with them on tracking and keeping track of deadlines and building those systems and routines so that we're habit building as students begin their high school career is absolutely critical. It's also a time where we're encouraging a higher level of independence than we have um, for, for many young students. Um, so trying to work together to take a step back, help students grow and empower their own voices in in what they want, what they're looking for in high school, in problem solving um, is, is a big step that, that we encourage families and students to take in, in freshman year and, and beyond that. Utilizing resources and asking for help, that's another way in which we suggest students you know, learn to grow and advocate for themselves, to exercise their voices, um, you know, approaching adults, approaching teachers, approaching a counselor or administrator and saying like, hey, I need this, I need help. Um, you don't have to know what you need, um, just know that you need help with something. And that, that's our role, is to provide that perspective, to know our systems, to know our resources, so that we can provide the support that, that you and your student need. Um, I talked about homework a little bit already. Arriving to school each day on time and ready to learn is crucial, is crucial. Um, first period starts early. We start at 7.35 a.m every day and being here on time ready to learn for first period is is absolutely critical we're very lucky that this year the district is providing breakfast and lunch for all students so um, if you don't have the opportunity to eat before you leave the house ha they can eat when they get here and then make it on time for first period but please do everything you can to have them either on the bus or dropped off on time so that they have the opportunity to take care of all those needs prior to 7.35 when we start first period. And then this is a big one. Avoid the social media traps. Avoid the social media traps. Um, I highly encourage you to have an open dialogue with your student regarding their digital life, their life on social media. Um, it, is, it is the Wild West in a lot of ways. And you know we spend quite a bit of time helping students manage um, conflict, manage their interpersonal interactions with their peers on social media. Um, and I think even though we're saying, you know, we're looking for a higher level of independence, you being a part of managing that part of their lives is still absolutely crucial. Um, we do everything we can to educate our students on what can happen online, um, but they still need guidance um, really through their high school career. Um, you know, I've had significant experience with students and families who, um, you know, as they get older and they're thinking about post high school options, they'll talk to athletic recruiters or college recruiters and they will do some research on you. And we're all readily available online with a quick Google search of a name. And everybody, every day in every way is creating a virtual portfolio. And when colleges or employers are thinking about the people they're going to have on their campus or they're going to bring into their workplace, they're thinking about who, how are they going to impact this environment. Um, you know, if you're going to go to college, you're going to live there and be a part of that community. If you're coming in the work, you're there sometimes more, more than you are in your own home and you're a member of the community. What kind of dynamic are you bringing to that? And you want to make sure that your digital life um, represents you in a very positive way. So please have those conversations at home and be careful. So these are just some methods of communication. Um, right now I published a called a weekly wrap. It's a s'more similar to the s'more that they send um, at the middle school. Um, you can follow the high school on Twitter um, and me. We have a quarterly newsletter and then all of the ways our website, grade level teams. So we use teams a lot, that's Microsoft Teams a lot for communication here at the high school. There'll be a grade level teams um, for our freshmen next year, and then of course our student management system, Infinite Campus. All right, so 
That's it for me for right now. I'm going to invite our counselors, and you can grab those mics right there if you want. And we'll talk a little bit about, from their perspective, some information they want to share with you. You want me to click for you? Sure? Okay. Uh, one of the counselors here. Are you on? Let's make sure it's on. Does this work? Mine works. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. So I'm, <laughs> I'm Jen Mahoney, one of the counselors here. Um, and we just want to go over some things briefly. These are the graduation requirements. Um, there's 22 credits you need to graduate. Students in eighth grade are already earning one of their credits through their world language. And then it kind of goes over a little bit of what they will need, um, including the regents at the bottom, the five regents for your regents diploma, or the um, eight you would need for the advanced regions. This is something that your counselors are looking at with every student every year to make their path and make sure they're on track for this. Thank you. And, and I'll note that the minimum enrollment here at the high school is six and a half credits per year. Six and a half credits. So based on that alone, your student will exceed the minimum 22 credits. Um, so yeah, again, these are the diploma types. There's the local diploma. The Regents Diploma with the five exams of the 65 or better on each exam. The Advanced Regents, there you have, oh sorry, nine exams with 65 or better. Um, one way to get there is to take the three world languages, three years of it. There are a cu couple other pathways um, we could go over with each student. And then there are different um, extra things you can have your diploma, you could have with honors. That's if you have a 90 or better on um, eight of the Regents. You could also get a mastery in math or science. That is if you have 85 or higher on three math exams or 85 or higher on three science exams. Um, so yeah, we're just starting, in, uh, starting now or starting in ninth grade looking at what diploma you're working towards, if you wanna get honors, if you wanna work towards a mastery. There's also um, a couple of seals, like the seal of biliteracy we could work on. Hi guys, I'm Mrs. Howlett, and I am one of the other school counselors. Um, if I confuse any students today, I am married to Mr. Howlett. He's really not my brother. It was a bad joke. I don't know. Okay. I know, some kids I said, oh, he's my brother, and students were like, huh? And then I was like, oh, we're married. And then later on, students were like, so what's your relationship? And then I felt bad, because it's like one of those jokes that you tell, and when you have to explain it, it's not funny anymore. Um, so let's talk about high school transcript. When your students, your students right now are already starting their high school transcript. Kind of exciting. So as eighth graders, you have the opportunity to get on your transcript your world language, so French or Spanish. Um, you're in the first year of that, so they're going to have, your students are going to have world language on as an eighth grade, but it's a high school credit. So that grade counts. If your student or your student, you guys are out there, if you guys are taking algebra or earth science in eighth grade, that's also a high school credit. That's gonna go on your high school transcript. So on your high school transcript, you're gonna see that we have um, every course you take and the final grades for it and then the credit you earn. So where are my students that were here today that we talked to? Okay. Tell me, what's a credit? How do you get one? Class. What? Half class. Okay, but a half year or a full year class? Full year. Full year gets you a full credit, yeah, and a job. half year class gets you a half credit. Exactly. So we're going to tell you what type of credit that you earn for each one of those classes as well. This is your transcript, which develops your grade point average, your GPA. And that becomes really important when we start talking to you guys as juniors and seniors. So this counts, it's eighth grade counts. The other thing that we talked about today was world language and the fact that you have to pass that. If you pass the class and you don't pass the exam at the end of eighth grade, you don't actually earn that credit. And you have to repeat that exam or possibly you have to repeat that entire course. So eighth grade really does matter in a lot of ways. Oh. Sorry, are you ready to go on? I don't even remember what I saw up there. 
It's oh, yeah. that graduation. Okay, so we're talking about, thank you very much. So your academic program, your academic record is your transcript. Um, and we're going to give you a copy of that every single year that we meet with your students so you guys can um, be able to kind of keep track of how they're doing with their grades. But I would encourage you to all have Infinite Campus um, and that parent portal so that you can constantly be looking at those grades as well. No surprises. So Wamoko, well, why do we talk about it in eighth grade? Because we want you to know what's coming for you guys, right? We want to know what choices you're going to have in just a few years. Well, MoCo is going to be one of them. But here's the important part. You have to get through your English, your social studies, your math, your sciences. You need to get that health out of the way. You need to get an art or a music credit out of the way. All right, where's my kids again? What, do you, what classes can you take for an art or music requirement? Come on. Go. What? Studio and art, one of them, good. Anybody else? Go. DDP, thank you. What else we got? Nothing? Come on, you guys. Where's my music people? Band, choir, orchestra, and there's one more, music explorations. I think some people kind of forget about that one. So you guys need to get those out of the way so that you have room to go to Wamoko in your junior and your senior year. They have some amazing programs over Omoko. Really, um, I find that Wamoko is for our hands-on learners a lot of times, but they have some other amazing programs right now, um, including like criminal justice, one of the most popular ones over there, nursing assistant, dental assistant. These can all lead to jobs straight out of high school, making a really great uh, livable salary. Um, we also have, for senior year, New Visions. So what's New Visions? New Visions is an internship, and it's an internship opportunity that our seniors will have. Um, but again, you have to be prepared. You have to have a minimum GPA. The same with our 313 program. The 313 program says, as a senior, you're at the college taking college courses for half a day, and you're over here at the high school taking high school courses for half a day, and at the end of the year, all that college credit combined, you complete an entire year of high school and you complete an entire freshman year in college, all in the same year. But you have to have a good GPA and you have to have at least a 75 or above on all those Regents exams. So we tell you now so that you have some goals in mind. No, you're good. So CIP, that's an in-house career internship program, different than our New Visions internship program. Our New Visions is really geared towards um, our uh, students who are really medically focused. They are actually interning. Um, right now, this year, they are at Strong Hospital. Um, so they have an incredible opportunity. I have a girl that I was talking with today who is working in um, and shadowing in pediatric um, oncology and hematology. I have another student right now who is interning in the emergency room. Talk about amazing experience as a senior in high school to really understand, is this medical career something I really want to do? Um, but again, these all come with some type of GPA requirement or minimum grade requirement um, or exam requirement. Goals to be set. So the scheduling process, um, next week, uh, Mrs. Mahoney and myself and Ms. Dardano will all be going over to the middle school to work with the middle school counselors. And we're gonna start working with the eighth grade students to make their elective selections. Today we had this an amazing a panel of students who got to talk with the eighth graders about the things that they really loved and were passionate about um, and the electives that they're taking. One of the really cool things that we saw was the crossover. So many of our students on that panel weren't just business students, or they weren't just art students, but these were students in technology that were also in the band. Students that sang in the choir, but were also gearing to get their CTE in business. So a lot of crossover, and the opportunity for your students to take a multitude of um, electives is there. 
um, they're going to, along with their world language, be able to select three other electives, um, and that's three full credit electives. Now, if they do half credit electives, they'll have even more um, because they'll do two half years um, to get that. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, this might be a good moment for me to note some, something that is kind of in the works um, it's right exciting. now. It's exciting. That is very exciting in our support of our freshman students. So we are currently working on the potential for, to have some coursework specifically designed to support students in their ninth grade year, to support that transition, to support those executive functioning skills and all the things that make students successful here in high school. This is something that's, that we're currently designing, so I don't have all the details worked out, but something to keep in mind as you're making elective selection choices, because it could impact uh, a course that all of our ninth grade students next year will, will have to take. Thank you, Mr. Pentelli. So um, oh. what we're gonna be asking your students to do today is to go in and take a look at the program studies guide and start choosing some courses that kind of excite them or get them interested in something. I want you guys to be making choices based on good knowledge. Don't pick it because your friend picked it. I want to know that you looked at this and you've decided, I really think studio art is kind of cool and based on what the students said today, I think I would really like that. Or, I love that slide on DDP. I can't believe the things that they build even as freshmen and I think that's amazing and I want to do that. I want them to make knowledgeable selections for their electives. Now, can I promise that you're going to get exactly what you select? No, because sometimes our schedule just doesn't fit it correctly but we do try our best. And that's why we ask your students to also pick backup electives. So if for some reason that first choice doesn't fit in, I know what the backup selection is and then we'll um, ask the computer to kind of go ahead and put that in. But what we're asking for your students to do between now and next week when we meet with them is to really research their options and pick the correct ones for themselves. So for themselves. Our program studies guide for next year is already posted online. You can access that on the district website, high school site, and then it's posted on the counseling page as well. Okay. Awesome. So this is um, just some additional information regarding our social emotional learning staff, Ooh, social can workers. Can I just plug this? Can you plug it? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So talking about social emotional learning, we have this great program called Friends of Rachel, and they are handing out Friends of Rachel bracelets outside. So. There, there's no price for them. There just shows that you're supporting our students and their program. Um, it's all about supporting the students here in the building, Friends of Rachel. So stop by their table. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we also have, this is, FLEC is, uh, stands for Focus, Learn, Engage, Connect. This is our 809 transition program. So uh, this is a club of students in our school, some, some staff members that help support year-long transition to the high school. And I'm going to give you now a chance to hear directly from some of our students and parents who are here. So if you're out there, students and parents, come on up. These seats are for you. Grab a mic. Come on up. Woo! Oh, I love the warm welcome. Yes, you. It's your turn. Yes. <laughs> come on up. So... I thought it would be nice for you to be able to hear, not from me, um, but directly from our students and parents about their experience here. So I got a series of questions to ask you. Um, so I'll pray, play uh, Oprah Winfrey here. Um, maybe you can just really quickly introduce yourself, mention what grade level you're in, or your role if you're a parent, and uh, maybe very briefly, about the activities or clubs or things that you participate in here. So, go ahead. Hi, I'm Carly, and I'm a big music kid. Uh, I'm in VHS Heartstrings, which is uh, like a mini rock band we have. It's guitar, ukulele, and the director is really cool, so I totally recommend it. <laughs> My name's Jane Lloyd. I am a sophomore, and I'm involved in... Okay. Uh, Sorry, my name is Jane Lloyd, I am a sophomore, and I'm involved in student council, um, 
Trium, which is our music honor society, and a bunch of other music related things, which uh, you should totally join because the people are very lovely and just the community is lovely as well. Uh, hi, I'm Ella. I'm a junior. I'm involved in NHS, Student Council, uh, Model UN, a bunch of other like more academic clubs. Um, and I don't know, I really recommend a lot of the clubs at this school, especially like NHS and the Food Shelf, because you get to be involved in the community, and it's great. Hi, I'm Andrew. I'm a junior here at BHS. I'm involved in a lot of the same clubs as uh, Ella, and I'm excited to be here today. Hi, I'm Helena Dela Cruz. I'm also a junior. I'm involved in Student Council, NHS, FLEC. Um, I just recommend really getting involved. It makes you feel like you're a part of something. So yeah. Hi, I'm Carrie Pardon. Um, I am the mom of four kiddos that are Brockport students, or were. Um, a 19-year-old who's now a freshman at college, a 17-year-old who's now a junior at college, ask me questions after. Um, I, <laughs> I've got a 15, almost 16 year old who's a sophomore here at the high school now, and I have an eighth grader who will be joining next year. Hello, I'm Al Polsino. I'm Brockport resident. I have two children in the Brockport district in high school. Um, I'm a Brockport PTSA member. I really suggest some parents to get involved in that and be involved in your child schooling, um, it's a great thing, and we're really in need of help. Thank you. I'm Amy Stoker, and I'm a ringer here tonight. Didn't know I was gonna be up here, but I do have two children. Um, Alex is at SUNY Geneseo, he just graduated last year, and then I have Anderson, who will be a freshman here next year, so. Yes. Cool. Thanks for joining us. All right, so I got a series of questions here for us to talk about. Um, everybody doesn't have to respond to every question, so maybe one or two perspectives on each question, and then we'll move on. Um, but maybe you could talk a little bit about what you found to be the best part of your experience here at the high school, or with the high school if you're a parent or family member. Anybody want to respond to that? The, the best part about being in high school. Yeah, uh, I, I would just say that probably my favorite part has been been being involved. Uh, going through middle school and even in my freshman year, it was kind of a figuring yourself out kind of process, which I'm sure a lot of the students can relate to. And then going into my sophomore year, I really started to make an effort to become more involved in different clubs, NHS, FLEC, Model UN. And I mean, I definitely don't regret that at all. Just being involved in your school community is a, is a very valuable thing. And it, it introduces you to a lot of new people, make a lot of new connections, and just help you overall as a person. Um, I gotta say one of the most important things like for me when I first came, uh, like experience wise, was meeting some of the teachers because I find uh, they can be very reliable if you need help. They're all, for the most part, very understanding and uh, just really great people. And you can be honest with them if you're struggling. Just always, they if you need to check in with them, you always can. And I think that's a very important piece of being here. Because I think a lot of kids are nervous to ask for help when they first get here. I know I was very much like that, but yeah. That's a good point, I think. You know, we hear that a lot, especially if I'll hear it from the staff. Like, if I only knew, if someone had only told me. Our, our staff are ready and anxious to respond, and sometimes it's just somebody a student, parent advocating or, or mentioning that there's a concern or a question and, and we're ready to respond. All right, so what has been or was the most challenging or difficult part about your transition to high school? Uh, I'd probably say the hardest part for me was just like discovering myself and figuring out like where I belong, what clicks don't really exist like you see in the movies, Mean Girls is probably no. fake, um, clueless, fake, but you do find people you belong with. It might not be the picture perfect movie sort of group, but you will find the group that fits for you and that's one of the big things I learned. It does get better. Um, I know, I think either soon or maybe some of you eighth graders already have is picking your courses. I very much uh, struggled with this because I'm like, I don't really know what to take because I want to take this and this and this and there's so much you want to take, 
but um, I know like having alternatives definitely helps. So like if you don't get one of the electives you want, you get another one. But um, I find just picking courses can be difficult because you're throughout high school, you don't necessarily know what you want to do or if you even want to go to college. But I just think that's probably the most difficult part. Thank you. I'm going to try this sophomore. I think this will work for me. I'll give this one to down here to adults. Thank you. It's the most challenging. Maybe an adult perspective on this? Oh, I've got one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I've got my girls are older than my boys are younger. And my girls, well, one was during COVID, so that doesn't even count. But uh, for my son, it was very challenging coming in and learning to manage his own time. There are so many choices. Hearing about the implementation of the executive functioning support is exciting for me because he really needed, I kind of had to be a secretary and, and just make sure he was completing tasks and keep him on time and move things along. So finding that balance as a parent between completely controlling and telling them what to do and letting them be responsible and suffer some consequences for those choices, um, finding that happy medium was key for us and challenging. I find that my uh Let's see, my son in 10th grade is, has a lot of challenges with school, and I find the kids ask for help, and you can definitely get it, whatever they need. I mean, I feel the school is, goes above and beyond for any student, you know, whether they challenge in, with learning or anything, bullying, there's help out there for everything. The school offers a lot. You just got to ask. That's the biggest thing. And they definitely will look out for you. Hey, thank you. OK, so let's talk about when you're in class. High school is kind of like maybe in some ways like you do see in the movies where there's kind of like what's going on in the classroom, then there's what's going on in the halls, et cetera. Let's talk about in the classroom, how have you learned to be successful? What are the steps you've taken or the skills you've learned that have helped you to be successful in the classroom? Uh, I think for me, it was probably learning how to use the resources that um, the school provides for us, like through class links and stuff, um, especially in like language classes and stuff like that, like there's word reference. There's all these just great tools to help the students learn and definitely making connections with teachers. Um, it just really helps being able to go to a teacher for help whenever you need it or whenever they're available and knowing that you can trust them and rely on them. For me, probably the thing that's helped me be most successful is ACE and after school. Um, ACE and after school, you could just go to your teachers for extra help. For me, it was scary at first because I didn't, like, I was scared of my teachers and I didn't want to have to ask them for help. But once you do, it really benefits you in the end. And I think you should use that time wisely and not just go on your phone and stuff like that. So two things real quick. ACE, in case you don't know, ACE is an every other day open period in our schedule. So every other day, students have an opportunity to self-select where they go and what they do with that time. Um, so that is a moment where some of those uh, decision-making skills, that executive function would come into play. What else, you mentioned something else that I wanted to, to talk about. Um, I, also I, just, I also just thought that uh, another important thing is um, using your time wisely is something I have worked on very hard the past two years, uh, especially in classes, because uh, I find with teachers, they tend to give you more time to work independently. And it's important to use that time wisely because you tend to actually get a lot of work done during then and even maybe even finish your homework. So I just, I recommend using that time wisely. <laughs> Agreed. I remembered. It was the cell phone expectation. So I did work directly with Mr. Roberts and our, our expectations for cell phone use in the high school is the same as at the middle school. In no way should they be out or used in any learning space in our building. All right. How have you learned about how to be successful in areas outside of the classroom? So clubs, extracurricular activities. We, we know you can get there. And we know we have opportunities. But how do you navigate them? And how have you learned to integrate those into the successful parts 
of your lives. And parents, I'd be interested in hearing from you as well because I know it takes a lot as a parent of three young children myself, getting them to and from all of the activities and balancing that is, is a job in and of itself. So how, how have you figured out how to manage those um, pressures on your time and expectations here in high school? One of the biggest things I learned, I'd have to say, is that being successful doesn't have to be in academics. You don't have to be the best in your class to be successful. So being successful is basically finding what you're passionate about and going with that. Like, I'm president of Friends of Rachel, which is our kindness club. We preach about just spreading kindness and chain reactions and stuff. And just, I do a lot of journalism and stuff like that. So find what you're passionate about and go through it. And yes, academics are very important, but they're not like, the, it, sorry. Yes, academics are important, but it shouldn't be your whole life. Have yeah. some fun. We have, we have more to offer than just academics, yeah. Anybody else, any parents on managing after school life and all the things that go along with that? I, I know your kids are highly involved. Um. I just, uh, my husband and I just always keep checking in with our kids, you know. They are very involved, whether sports, music, different clubs, um, you know, we're always checking in with them. Do you have your homework done? What homework do you have? It is possible, you know, to do homework and be extremely involved and to be a high achieving student. But I think as parents, you do have to play some part in that, maybe not track every grade or assignment, and it's hard to do that with digital stuff these days sometimes, or maybe it's easy, but um, just check in with them and, you know, you have to give them some independence, but don't let them have too much independence. That's perfect, thank you. So how would you compare your experience academically at the middle school to your experience academically at the high school? A lot of times I think, you know, everybody says, you know, it's a big step up. It's a big step up. You're going to get tons of homework. How would you compare your experience as a student to the, in the middle school to the high school? I will say it's very different, mainly because uh, COVID hit when I was at the end of my sixth grade year. So basically the entirety of my middle school was COVID, and I lost a lot of the important aspects of, um, like, doing my work, I found. Like... I didn't submit things on time and I wasn't studying. And then once you get to high school, your teachers are like, okay, you need to start taking this seriously because this in a way kind of impacts your future. So I'd say like um, having the adults kind of be there to remind you, hey, you need to get your butt in gear. Um, <laughs> it, really, it really helps to kind of reset your mind into, okay, I need to be focused and um, improve. All right, I'm going to ask one more question, and then we're going to open it up to a, a little bit of Q&A from anybody who has any questions for our panel. But if you could give one piece of advice to your eighth grade self, so think back to the, however you were as an eighth grader at the middle school, and as you got ready for the transition to high school, what would that piece of advice be? It's not that bad. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, it, it seems so scary, but once you hit after like the first two weeks of your freshman year, maybe even the month, you're just kind of like, oh, okay, this is the new normal. But I know for some people, it can be a very difficult transition, and I just want you to know, no matter how long it takes, you'll eventually get there, and it'll, it won't be completely normal, but it'll be a new type of normal to you. Thank you. For me, I would say be yourself, try your best, and most importantly, time flies by, so enjoy it while you still can, because I can't believe I'm already halfway through, through my junior year, so just enjoy it. And, yeah. Parents, this question's for you as well, as you saw your students in eighth grade. If you could go back and give them any advice. I, I do want to hear from many other students, but I'd love to hear some parents on this as well. Any, any other students or parents want to comment? Um, I'll piggyback on what Mrs. Howlett said about eighth graders taking earth science, algebra, um, world language, that your high school transcript starts now as an eighth grader, so you have from now until the end of the year for whatever you're doing, but remember that your high school transcript starts now as an eighth grader as it goes, you know, as you go forward. Great. Does anybody have any questions or anything they're wondering from our student panel? Yes, go ahead.
So a big thing for me is that I do have a lot of anxiety as well, but I found a teacher who I'm really close with and I really connected with, and he was kind of like my crutch throughout high school. So I think it's just a piece of advice is find a resource. Um, there's always people here who will listen, and it might seem like no one's listening, but you just got to find that person and just... Um, there is, uh, I was, pers my freshman year, I was communicated to about, there is a, I think it's Genesee Mental Health Therapist who you can meet with, and there are also social workers in the counseling office who you can talk to about the, these things. I think a lot of people think that the counseling office is just for schedule-related things, but those people also are very, you can be very open with them and they will help you. I have found that through my journey a lot. They have helped me a lot, especially through this year. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's like a, um, an open study center. You can get a pre-signed pass from a teacher um, we do sometimes have club meetings that happen during that time. It's a very flexible time in, in second period, every other day at the high school. Um, if you don't mind saying something about ACE. So for gap in middle school, well, when I had it, only my team had gap at the same time, not the whole eighth grade. But for ACE, the whole school has ACE at the same time. I believe it's longer than gap. And yeah, ACE is used for clubs and activities during that time. But the most helpful thing for me is that everyone has ACE at the same time, so you can go travel to your different teachers. And in case you're wondering, ACE stands for Academics, Culture, and Enrichment. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, what is the age limitation on something? Anybody? Sure. They, uh, those classes are accessible to all students. I'll start with that. However, you know, the scheduling process is a multi-step process. So it begins with a teacher recommendation. There's a conversation to be had with the counselor. There are conversations we have at home. And we very much encourage that to be dynamic. So um, it's not a result of one thing or another, but a, an ongoing conversation about what is the best academic track for your individual student, as well as their overall academic experience. And there are many students who take multiple AP or honors courses, and, and finding the right balance so that they're not overwhelmed um, and are, are taking a rigorous course load, but one that is also you know, reasonable and, and leads to the outcomes that they want. So that's a complicated answer, but short answer is yes, but you know, let's talk about it. Any other questions? Oh, yeah, go ahead. This is for the students. How do you deal with school handled bullying? Bullying, you know, people picking on people. Do you feel they handle it right? Or is there anything you need as parents to be concerned about? I don't think there's anything for parents to be concerned about. Um, there all depends on the severity of the case or the situation. But our administration does the best they can to talk things out, and if it's a simple two people disagreeing, they call them down, they talk it out, and for more severe cases, they have like parents called, so like all parents are in the loop of that kind of stuff, and I believe they handle it pretty well. And we do have certain clubs that offer safe spaces for students, uh, such as like GSA or Diversity Club, um, so as a group, we discuss like instances where people have been bullied at the school, and there are resources such as like the SAP office or just going to any of the counselors here and we have surveys that are put out throughout the year that address like if we've been bullied or what's going on in the household and stuff like that and it's very helpful for students. Um, also if certain problems become issues you can fill out incident reports and they will review them and follow up with you on those issues. Uh, those can help and so I think there's also if things get really really severe so and I hope that doesn't happen uh, I think there's also something else called like DASA reports something like that but yeah if like something does need to be reported it will be reported 
Thank you. Any other questions as we get ready to transition to our department fair in the lobby? All right, so freshman orientation will be this August. More details will be communicated about that soon, but that will be one day in that month. Your student will receive their laptop and we'll have some other activities to help acclimate them to the high school. You're going to have the opportunity in the lobby to meet some members from all of our academic departments. I also want to point out that on our website, you can see additional information about each of our academic departments as well, as well as our program studies guide, which is the, the document that details all of the courses that we have, prerequisites, um, the credits that are afforded when students uh, pass those courses, um, as well as what will be covered. So again, I want to thank you for your partnership over the next four and a half years. I do believe our par partnership starts now as you start to talk about transition from middle school to high school. Here's some contact information for me, any of our assistant principals, we are here for you. So please don't hesitate to reach out at any time. I want to thank all the members of our student and parent panel. Great job. Please stay and talk to our teachers and ha have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you all.